Hi, welcome to my little tutorial on bobbin work. I love to use it for added texture and pizzazz in my pictures. I typically use pearl cotton, but lots of other materials could be put in the bobbin. Pearl cotton comes in a variety of sizes. I usually choose size 5 because it gives a nice texture to my project. It's easily seen and it's one of the thicker pearl cotton so it fills in any area that you're sewing on really nicely. Um, 5 is a little bit hard to come by though sometimes and so I've also used 8 very successfully. Uh, for example in my bearded collie picture I can use either a 5 or an 8. Now as for colors, there are somewhat more limited colors in the balls of pearl cotton depending on which manufacturer you're using. This is all DMC and I find the skeins have many more colors readily available but they are trickier to use, no doubt about it, because as I'll show you in just a minute we're going to unwind the skein or the ball and, and wrap the pearl cotton on a bobbin so that we can do bobbin work. I prefer to wind bobbins by hand with this heavy thread in it because my machine doesn't have a speed regulator on the bobbin winding motor. So I don't want to get the machine to do it because it would go too quickly it would be round, wound too tight. So I don't, I want to put this tail on the side of my bobbin, hold it in place, and then catch that edge as best I can, or that tail on the edge, and wind very gener gingerly, very lightly around and around so that you're not pulling it tight and you're not uh, making it loop around in there or be very loose. I'm trying to get it over to this edge where I started. And the other thing I would say would be just keep going until you're about three quarters of the way uh, out to the edge of your bobbin because we don't want it to overfill and then get caught as we're sewing. So then you're ready to go, except just to snip that little end of your um, thread where you started. And then you're ready to put it into the bobbin case. If your machine does have the ability to regulate the speed of the bobbin winding, you can do it by machine. Just make sure that you have the setting on quite slowly because you're going to need to feed and kind of manipulate the thread onto the bobbin as it winds. As you can see, I have a drop-in bobbin case. And for this particular one, this is a Janome machine, I do just drop my bobbin in that's loaded with the pearl cotton, and I don't put it through that little hook that I normally need to use with a uh, regular bobbin thread or regular sewing thread in the bobbin. And that's because the hook catches this thick thread and it doesn't let it have the right tension and my sewing gets kind of um, tight from the bobbin side. Now you need to check on your machine whether or not it should go your bobbin thread for pearl cotton or heavier threads should go through that little hook. Some people find it needs to, some don't. And also, if you have um, the other kind of bobbin case that slides in on the bottom side of the machine, you're going to want to test that as well. Some people find that it works beautifully. Some people find they eliminate the, or they change the tension on that. Um, it just depends. The other option is, do you want to try getting another bobbin case and just have one set for your 
bobbin work and one set for your normal sewing. Some people like to do that because then they don't have to worry about the tension. I personally never change the tension on this. I like to just change the top thread tension, if anything. And speaking of the top thread, I have put in a matching color green in my uh, spool holder so that when I stitch, you won't be able to see that thread at all. So let me get set up here and I'll begin showing you exactly how I do this. I like to work in free motion. So my feed dogs are dropped and I have my free motion foot on. However, this can be done with a normal sewing foot and with the dogs up. But of course you know that you get a lot more control of your curves and things as you are sewing when you have it in free motion and the dogs are not up or engaged. So to begin this, I have, as I mentioned, have my thread not go or my pearl cotton not going through the bobbin hook at all. And I've just got a little bit of a tail on both the top thread and the pearl cotton. And I'm just going to turn the hand wheel to draw up that pearl cotton. There it comes. Just a little bit of gingerly pulling on it. it works every time. Then I can put my cover back on and I'm good to go. So the first thing I want to check of course is that I'm sewing smoothly and I'll tell you now that it takes a little time to practice this because like any free motion sewing you're going to have a little bit of adjustment between how fast the machine is going and how fast you're moving the fabric. Same is true for bobbin work. I'm sewing on a piece of lightweight canvas. I like it because it's a flexible stabilizer, but yet it doesn't pull up very often when you're stitching uh, heavy threads on it or heavily, period, in free motion. And free motion is my choice. So I'm using the dogs down, the free motion foot is on, and I'm going to start sewing with the uh, Hand, my hand holding both the bobbin thread and the top thread so I don't get a little nest. Remember the back side of what I see now is really the front and I don't want to have a little ball of threads showing on that back side. So here we go, starting kind of slowly. get pretty accurate with the stitching and I'm just practicing well, some people find when they go really slowly they get a little zigzag stitch and sometimes they get it when they go faster. So you have to check your front side and like I say, practicing is always good before you actually start doing this. So I'm gonna pull this out and take a look at that other side. Ooh, that turned out pretty good because it's a pretty smooth line and that's exactly what I was going for. Now what to do with these ends? Sometimes I plan it so that I can stitch over it with something else, another pearl cotton or some other thread. But sometimes I just snip it close to the top and then I put, it, uh, put a dab of um, fray check or even white glue on it. You also can get a large eyed excuse me. You can also get a large eyed needle, thread that end into the needle and then poke the needle through to the back side so that the, the end of the pearl cotton is now back here. So I'm pretty happy with the way this went and I'll show you the next step of how to get a particular pattern onto the piece that you're sewing on. So one way of course is to mark your design with a pencil on the back side and a caution here, if you're doing it on the back side, 
just drawing it directly on the back. You're going to remember to reverse the letters if anything has a direction to it. Reverse it because you're going to see it the opposite way on the reverse side, which is actually the front. So I've made my backwards B. I'm holding on to my tails. I have to put the foot down. Could you put this in a hoop? You sure can. And I think I'll just sew over that a little bit. Okay. Remember not to use my thread cutter. And I'll just snip my threads myself. And there is my B. Just needing to have the end snipped off and a dab of glue or fray check right there. All right, the next method is a little trickier, but I think it's better for more elaborate designs. The next way to get your design on the back of your project is to actually trace it onto some tracing paper or use quilter's paper that you can actually draw your design on and then sew right through it. So you can easily sew through tissue paper. So I'm going to show you that now. So we'll start here. I have to find my pen, my drawing. This is from the package of Sorol. I'm just going around the outline of it. I don't know how detailed I will actually make my picture from this example. Next, I'm going to take the tracing I just made, put it on the back side of my project. I'm going to pin it in place so I'm sure to get it just where I want it. And I have a thread caught in here, but that's good because I wanted to tell you about this. I uh, put a red thread in the top of my machine, and of course I've got my green pearl cotton in the bottom. So I'm hoping that you can see how the stitching turns out with a contrasting thread. It could be a kind of a fun design element to do. I'm stitching right through the tissue paper on the back side. Varying off my lines. You can go any direction you want here. As well as do, doing the outline, I could certainly go back and forth with lines of stitching and fill in anywhere I wanted to. So let's see how the stitching came out. 
I think I've said it before, but I'll say it again. I don't use my automatic thread cutter because it usually gets, uh, the thread gets jammed up when I'm using heavy uh, thread or ribbon in the bobbin. So I just try to remember to always snip it by hand. So here's the front side. Turned out pretty good. I think these little wiggly lines are because I was going extra slowly right there. But you can see with the right speed, I could get a nice straight line as well. Some people like to use these little wiggles because it uh, kind of adds some whimsy and some, some more interest. So now, let's see. Can you see the bobbin thread or the top thread? Barely. Just barely. I'm thinking, what if you put a sparkle metallic or something in the top thread and then had little sparkles sh showing through to the front side? There's some of the red showing up. One way I like to use to get the drawing on the back side of my project is to take a picture of some kind that I want on that project and I'm going to use the stabilizer and possibly some fabric on the right side of the stabilizer but the sketch is going to go on the back so I'm going to take the Sorrel paper again and put it on top of my back of my back side of my fabric just leave it like that so you can see for sure that that's on that fabric. And then I put the picture I want to copy on top of all of that. And I draw around it with a sharp something. Uh, I've done this before as you can see my sloppy drawing, but it helps to use a ruler and press pretty hard. In this case, you're not drawing right on your fabric, so it doesn't matter if you use something that shows the marks like this pen does. So I would just trace over all of those lines. And I'll just do part of this right now so you can see what I'm talking about. And then, when I lift up the Sorrel and the pattern, you can see there is, are lines that you can stitch over. So it's a very simple, direct, easy way. Just a caution, remember that when you flip it to the front side, this image will be reversed. So if you need to, you can trace over it when it's upside down. I can. This is a piece of... Um, printer paper and I can still see where the lines are so I could still trace over them and uh, have the image going the correct way on the front side. This method for getting your pattern on the back side of your picture involves having a design on the front that you maybe want to outline or enhance in some way. How do you get that design onto the back so when you stitch from the back it looks good on the front with pearl cotton or a heavy thread of some kind. So what I've done is taken the design, I've, I've fused some petals on the canvas or it would be a background perhaps on your picture and um, you could use glue stick. We're not going to use the point on a pen, we're going to just use the, the plastic edge and I'm just going to outline this. I Again, I put the Sorrel transfer paper on the back side with the transfer side up, not the, uh, not the just paper side. And I could pin this or just pray that it all works out just fine. So I'm going to just trace as carefully as I can around the edge. And I'm pressing fairly hard.
would continue going around the rest of the flower. See, having it fused on really helps so these edges don't come up when I'm pressing heavily on them to do the transfer. All right, imagine that I've gone all around the whole thing. So when I turn it over, there's the image I want to stitch on. bad. Then I would just keep going around the others and add a stem or whatever. Simple. One other way you can mark where you want the pearl cotton to go is by stitching right around the edge of the design that you have on the front of your piece with a matching color. So you then have this line, oh I used white, but you have this line of stitch, this line of stitching here, which now you can use, which now you can use for your outline for stitching the pearl cotton. So you just switch back from regular thread in the bobbin to pearl cotton, go over it again, and it should turn out just fine on the front because you've marked it very accurately. All right, finally I just wanted to mention there are lots of threads that you can put in the bobbin. I like to put in, I don't even know what brand this is, but this particular um, metallic is really fun. It's a nice, nice thread, but my machine doesn't like it when it goes through the top. So as you can see, I put it on a bobbin and it sews beautifully for bobbin with bobbin work. The other things that you could use would be very tiny ribbon or perhaps you could try a yarn that isn't too stretchy and uh, I think you'll really have fun with it. You can see I've changed to my regular presser foot and I've got the dogs up on my machine. I've set my machine on a zigzag stitch. I have the metallic thread in the bobbin and I have uh, rayon turquoise in the top. So let's see what happens. Well that's pretty. I got some turquoise and I got some uh, metallic showing there. I think if I adjust the tension, it's going to have more metallic or more turquoise showing. So let me turn it up quite a bit and see what happens. I think with this thinner thread, I could be using my thread cutter, but not in the mood to play with the machine if it doesn't like it. So. So play around with your different uh, threads in your bobbin and play around with some different stitches. Try it with your dogs up, dogs down, free motion foot, and regular sewing foot. And I think you'll have a lot of fun with it. Happy stitching!
that's a fun way to sew with a fussy metallic thread. Most of the top thread came through instead of the metallic on this setting. So keep playing, have fun, bye.